Hey everybody and welcome back to our True Image YouTube channel. We are right now in a series entitled Dealing with Our Own Insecurities. And in this particular lesson, we are going to be talking about the issue of gossiping. Yay! <laughs> I know this is something that every person deals with and I pray that um, we're just going to put, uh, put an end to this gossiping thing and learn um, how to cover one another, learn how to pray for one another, learn um, how to tame our tongue, and just use wisdom when we're in conversations. Um, and so I hope you're uh, enjoying these videos. I'm really enjoying doing them for you. I'm growing just like you are. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pray and we'll get started. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for everyone that's watching. I thank you, Lord, for the work that you are doing um, in our hearts. I thank you, Father, that as we are dealing with our own insecurities, I thank you, Lord, that we're not getting so discouraged, but God, we see that the pros the progress that we are making. Father, I thank you, Lord, that we're not going to um, be bound to these insecurities, but Lord, I pray that um, you are helping us deal with them, deal with them uh, your way um, by replacing all of these issues, Lord God, with the truth of your word. Lord, I thank you for freedom that's going to last and um, not just something that we're just going to experience every now and then, but I pray that the Holy Spirit is uh, working in us and through us and for us and helping us overcome all of these struggles in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm really excited about this uh, lesson. Like I said, this is something that everyone deals with. And so something about gossiping, let's just um, go ahead and get right into it, is uh, if, you've ever, if you have ever played this game, which I'm sure most of you watching have, is that game telephone where you all sit in a circle and someone starts off and by the time it gets back to you, what you said to the person next to you is not what you hear once everything comes back to you. And I think that is a that game is a real um, picture, a great picture of life. Um, if you've ever played that game, sometimes you're like in the middle area of, of the circle and it gets to you and you look at that person that says something, you're like, what? She, what did she say? And it's funny because you think about the expressions people get and how, even though it's a funny game, I think, like I said, it really depicts life that when we hear gossip, it's, what did she say? What did she, you know, we, we're all dramatic about it. You know, like, wait, what? And uh, most of the time gossip, it, it's not something that's good about somebody. Gossiping is ugly, it's nasty, and we do not need to have any part of it. Um, and so these are some things that I've learned. Uh, one, a person who gossips to you will more than likely gossip of you. And uh, it's very important that um, we've all gossiped about people and um, we've been, all been gossiped about. And so it's important that you understand that a lot of times when people are gossiping, most of the time it's not true. Because after it goes through all the different people, it winds up being something. The only thing that's the same are maybe the people that were in it from the beginning, were in the story from the beginning. But what all the details, by the time it gets back, it's not anything. I cannot tell you how many times over the years I have, again, misjudged people or I said things or I started things out of what I heard instead of what was really true. And so I've learned that if I hear something that I feel like I need to go address just because I hear something doesn't mean I'm going to go address it. But if I really feel like, okay, this needs to be something I need to address, I'm going to go straight to that person and say, hey, this was what I heard. I'm coming straight to you. Is there any truth in this? Yes, no, maybe, whatever. Um, just because in, in my, the how I am at the church and my role, I have to obviously pay attention to things and uh, you know, protect people and do the best that I can to, you know, help people. And then obviously with it being in a church, people, um, people are always going to say stuff. People are always going to, are going to assume stuff. So I have had to learn over the years, you know, how to listen to people without letting these meetings, you know, turn into a gossiping, gossiping session. And so, um, it's important that we all have sounding boards in our life that people we can talk to, but at the same time, okay, vent to me, but we're not going to gossip. We're going to pray before we're done. We're going to pray for you and we're going to pray over this person, you know, that way, you know, we're, we're not just getting into this big gossiping fest. And so I wanted to read a few scriptures and over in Psalm 34, 13, it says, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from, and keep your lips from speaking deceit. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. A lot easier said than done. I know. Uh, Psalms 45 verse 1 says, My tongue is like the pen of a ready writer. Your tongue is writing stories. True, not true, 
you know, rumored, not rumored, whatever, our tongue is like the pen of a ready writer. We, our tongue is writing stories, not just about us, but also our words, you know, what we speak about people. We have got to choose our words wisely. Proverbs 12, 18 says, There are those who speak rashly like the piercing of a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. I've been on both sides of that. I have spoken things that I should have had no business speaking about people, and it, 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 it pierces. It pierces hearts. Um, and the tongue of the wise brings healing. I've also been on that end where my words have brought healing. And I've also been a recipient where people spoke harshly to me that really pierced me. And then um, I've also had people that used their tongue to bring forth um, healing. A song, Proverbs 18, 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they who indulge it will eat the fruit of it. Our words are powerful, and your words not only affect you, but they affect other people around you. When it comes to our words, um, like this says, that people in your sphere of influence, you're speaking life or speaking death over you, over a situation, over a person, over a group of people. Whoever's around you are going to eat that fruit, good or bad, death or life. Our words can have the power to influence people's decisions. Their words. I had a person tell me a while back that your words carry a heavy weight in my life. And I, I it really just kind of, I didn't think about that. If I'd say something or I would, what I, I, your words carry weight. So sometimes I don't think we think people really pay us attention or people are really listening to what we're saying. You have people in your life that, that your words carry weight in their life. Now we choose how we're going to let people's words affect us or not, but we all have those people in our life that what they say, what they don't say, good or bad, death or life, their words carry much weight in our decisions and um, which should not be the case, but you know, we're human and that's a whole other thing um, with people, but it, it's something that, that we have to work on. Uh, James 3, 5 says, even so the tongue is a little member and it can boast of great things. See how much wood or how great a forest a tiny spark can blaze. You know, sometimes we look at matches, we think, well, that one little match can't do something, but that one little match can start a huge fire. Um, so don't think that, well, it's just a something small. That's something small, if not tamed and if not dealt with, can really turn into a ripple effect and bear more consequence than what you and I realize. Um, your tongue is very small, but can do some serious damage. James 3, verse 8 through 10 said, The human tongue cannot be tamed by man. It is a restless, undisciplined evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord, and then we curse men who were also made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth comes forth blessing and cursing. These things should not be so. It is so important for you and I to know that we cannot be out of the same mouth projecting praises and loving the Lord, worshiping the Lord, and then the next moment we are out there cussing people out. It, 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 that can confuse people. Well, you're saying this, and a lot of people can look at that and say, well, you're, you're no different than me. You're you know, praising the Lord like this and saying all these Jesus things, but then you know, the next minute you're saying all this other garbage out of your mouth. Like, you know, it's no different than the world, and it's not to condemn the world, but there should be a distinct difference about Christians that we're not trying to beat people upside the head with the with the Bible and rebuke them and tell them all that they're, that they're doing is wrong. There should be a distinct difference by how we talk, how we live, how we act. Um, I remember a person telling me years ago. Um, she said, I was like, why were you all weird with me in, in this particular season? And this was years ago. And she's like, Lindsay, because I said, I never, she was out in the world and uh, kind of fell away from the Lord for a season. And she's like, I um, was like, did you not like me? Like, I didn't understand. Like, I never preached at you. I never, you know, beat you with the Bible. Like, I didn't understand. And she's like, Lindsay, just being around, like your own being around you made me uncomfortable. And I was like, oh, I didn't think anything of it, but there should be that distinctive. Now she's serving the Lord and she's doing great. But my point is, is that a lot of times it's not by just telling people, it's by the way that we live our life that, man, I respect this person because they're not perfect by any means, but they're striving for it. They're, they're pursuing Jesus. And you and I cannot be pursuing Jesus with our heart 
and not as we're pressing into him, not have that other junk being pressed out of us at the same time. Because when we want to be made in his image and his the true image of Jesus Christ, it's not just an outward thing. It's an internal thing. And these lessons aren't just to tell you how to do this, how to do that. It is to deal with what's on the inside because whatever is in the inside of us is what's going to come out. So I just encourage you in this gossiping thing, don't be one that starts it. Don't be one that uh, is in the middle and wrote, you know, always the gossip runner. You know, you're just always going back and forth, back and forth. And don't be one that's just a listener of it. Um, all of us have been in all three of those things. And these are things that I myself am continuing to be sensitive to. And I have people in my life, number one, the Holy Spirit, um, but my husband and I have some girlfriends that I have given them permission. If you hear me starting to turn something into a gossiping session, you talk, you, you get on me right then because I don't want to be that person that could cause hurt to someone and spread stuff that's not even true. So I hope that uh, that you're challenged in this. I hope that you allow the Holy Spirit to help you deal with this. And uh, next week, we're going to have a really fun uh, video. We're going to be talking about um, jealousy and how insecure people um, can be very jealous people. And so um, these are great. I'm loving these, but know that this is just as uncomfortable for me uh, doing these as it is um, as it is those of you that are watching. So I thank you for watching. I hope that these are encouraging you and we will see you next week when we talk about um, jealousy. So I'll see you then.